Yeah, we are sports fans. We're going. Corey just had to go and brush his teeth because he had a blueberry milkshake or something. <laughs> I did. I thoroughly Like a child, that. he was drinking a blueberry milkshake. You watch your tone, young man. You watch your tone with me, okay? I thought my tone was quite generous there. And your verbiage, it's, uh, it's not nice. It's not nice. Be nicer. Be kind. Do you like blueberries? I love blueberries. Um, James De Antonio. he says that blueberries are the best fruit. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You agree with him? I do. But do you not think that strawberries are the best fruit? Mm. So, immediately... I think what he's talking about is that blueberries is the superfood because strawberries are some of the most uh, fucked with fruit or berries uh, out there in the supermarket or grocery stores. How are they fucked with? Roundup, glyphosate, GMOs. Make them bigger, make them more red. Blueberries are pretty fucking unf- unfuckable. You can get them frozen; they're fucking good. You can get strawberries frozen too, but strawberries are the most fucked with great uh, berries. That's a real shame, isn't it? Because when you get good, fresh summer strawberries, yeah, they taste incredible. I don't think there's another fruit out there that tastes as good as a as a July strawberry in England. Yeah. They're incredible. And then you have some clotted cream with them or something. My Maybe goodness, a little selling it. drizzle of honey. And and you're just you're off to the races. This is as good as life gets, probably. We used to have a, a strawberry farm super close to our farm. Uh, farm. A strawberry farm close to our house. And uh, yeah, you could go there and you can pick your strawberries. So you, you, you buy an empty punnet of however big, like if it's a kilo size, if it fits a kilo, you can buy 10 bucks and then you go out there and you fill it up yourself and you can pick some like apple sized strawberries, like fucking so good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Damn strawberries are good. Uh, I know what he's saying about the blueberries being a superfood. Yeah. But they don't taste as good as strawberries. I disagree. I also disagree with that. Blueberries are fucking tasty, man. A good blueberry I can think pie. Of, I can think the... of f- five fruits that taste better than blueberries. Um, yeah, I could probably think of some other fruits that are better than f- flavor-wise than blueberries, but blueberries are pretty fucking good. I've actually... I, I only buy organic fruit. Good man. Uh, I think especially and when I say fruit, I mean any plants that I eat. Yeah. I make sure they're organic. Perfect. Uh, because I think, I mean, in an ideal world, it, I it, you would have all organic meat as well, but I think with meat it's probably less of a problem if they're not organic. Yeah. Or maybe more focused with grass-fed. Because if they're grass-fed, yeah. they're free range. Yeah, of course, of course. That, yeah. But I think that... I think there's probably less of a negative effect of poor quality meat than there is a negative effect of poor quality fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. When you, when you, when you buy, you're you're not, you're not spraying cattle, are you? Exactly. Exactly. And, and when you, when you're buying everyday commercial vegetables, you don't know what, what's been sprayed on them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
That's just as bad as drinking tap water, probably. Yeah. I've been getting into tropical fruits, though, recently. Mangoes, figs, dates, bananas. You know, I I ate a whole punnet of dates <laughs> the other day. It was an extremely gluttonous thing to do, but they were so good, I bought the punnet, and I thought, oh, those will last a couple of days. Just have a couple here or there. <laughs> It was like a 500 gram box of dates, and I just dummied all of them in about an hour. Are they pitted or unpitted? Unpitted. I would not yeah. buy pitted. Same as I wouldn't buy pitted olives. I think these, these fruits that have a big stone in them, once you remove the stone, they're on, a, they, well, they're, on, they're on a trajectory which is going downhill. I think if you buy them with the stone and take the stone out yourself, you're going to be getting the best version of that fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. You know, they get a bit flimsy. As Don't well. be lazy. Get... Don't be lazy. Just pit the olive yourself. So do you have any dates in the house? No, because they're, they're all gone now. <laughs> when you get more, cut them in half, take out that stone. And then put in just a little like slither of butter and a little bit of salt on top, buddy. It'll, ch it, dude. It'll change you. It's not, it's fucking not fair. It's not fair that I found as soon as I found this out, dude. Yeah, a whole stick of butter, <laughs> five hundred grams of dates won't stand a chance. The trouble with that is, the trouble with that is, is I already ate the whole box of dates yeah. without without the butter, butter in them. So if there was butter in them, I don't think I've got enough money to buy all of the dates that I would need. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's fucking good, dude. Severely good, aren't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what else I did. I wasn't feeling very well this week. Earlier Again? this week. Wow. Again, yeah, again. Uh, but I wasn't feeling very well, and I had a very intense sugar craving. So I did eat a whole box of dates, but then I also, on a, the next day, I ate a whole jar of honey. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, have you ever bought set honey? Like solid honey. So, I think that's called honey meal. Am, am, am I wrong? I've never seen it called honey meal. Yeah, I've, I at Costco you can get this tub. It's like a kilo tub, and it just looks it just looks firm. Maybe that's what they call it yeah. out there. But in in, I've only ever seen it called set honey. It's basically yeah. just hard. Yeah, I think it's crystallized honey. Yeah, and it's glorious. I mean, it's the the trouble is, I can't think of a use for it other than just eating it with a spoon. I put it in protein shakes and stuff. No, but hard honey. Are you talking like honeycomb? No, no. It's like a. It's a. It's kind of the same consistency as. Like Nutella. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. I use the same. Right, thing. it's yeah. too it's too thick to pour it. Yeah, you can't. It's not, it's not in a squeezy bottle. You get you got to get a spoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I couldn't think of anything to do with it other than just eat it with a spoon. Yeah, it's fucking deadly. Yeah. So I ate the whole jar of that, and I ate the whole box of dates. Yeah. Well, you're a savage, I feel right? better now. I feel better now. So it must, uh, it must have worked. Yeah, good for you. There's logic for you there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So as a result, I've not been running on much. Yeah, you're not getting out there, after, not getting after it as much, I guess. Well, I mean, I'm I'm back to it now, but it's been a 
let's say a stop start start to the to the a stop start start to the year. Yeah, uh, I kind of I was just putting the film to top shelf when I retested like my deadlifts and squats and stuff, and then I haven't really been running, swimming, or cycling for the last maybe ten days. But I'm getting good now, so I feel like I can get back at it. Speaking of that, did you see the uh, did you see the Rogue Invitational for the strongest man and strongest woman? No, I didn't. Tell me about it. Um, I was that's what I was just trying to bring up the accurate uh, kind of results here. But as I'm trying to go for the thousand <laughs> that thousand pound club. Uh, Thor Bjornsson Bjornsson the mountain got a thousand and six pound deadlift that's quite a lot (laughs) and he did it with ease man well I don't know what the current record is for the deadlift but I'm pretty sure a few years ago they did 500 Eddie. kilos. Yeah, that was Eddie Hall, I think. I think that was 11... I think that's 1,100 pounds. I think Eddie Hall I think it, I think Eddie Hall did 500 kilos, and then Thor did yeah. 501 kilos. Yeah something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, And that's what started the, the rivalry between them. Uh, so, yeah, I think that is about 1,100 pounds. Yeah. Like, what, insane. what an insane... I don't think there are any cars that are that light, are there? Not these days. No. Maybe the oh, the Fiat 500 Mini. I think maybe. I think the Fiat 500 was called the Fiat 500 because it originally had a 500 cc engine. Yeah. But it fucking be light. Anyway, uh, the yeah. so so you saw this guy <laughs> deadlift a thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that make like, you feel? Like insignificant, <laughs> tiny. It's fucking annoying. But these guys—he's pretty man, a lot big. He is. He is a lot bigger than you, though, isn't he? he these guys are eating like uh, ten to twelve thousand calories a day. Have you ever tried eating 10,000 calories in a day? No, I just don't think I could. Do you think you could do it for one day? I'd give it a red hot crack. That also means eating like a cheesecake after a bone in ribeye with fucking cup loads of rice, bags of rice. like. Well, I think to eat 10,000 calories, you have to eat a lot of meals in a day. You can't do yeah. it all in one sitting. No. But we've already discussed that to get big, you have to eat a whole cheesecake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tubs of ice cream and shit. <laughs> I saw a video the other day of Arnold's old diet when he was in competition. Oh really? In his in his bulking phase. And I think he was on about five thousand calories a day. But it was a strange it was it was not exactly what you'd expect. The their nutrition approach was nowhere near as complicated as it might be now. Right. And the the guy was basically just eating a lot of meat a lot of bread a lot of milk and potatoes and things like that yeah but it was there were no supplements apart from some of the <laughs> enhancers a little, of, a, little, a little bit of sauce on those potatoes i think he was on a bit of vitamin t <laughs> but apart from that it was all whole foods yeah I don't know if anyone's ever said vitamin T before. <laughs> I might have just made up a thing there. I think I think you're either suggesting testosterone or 
Or Trembolone. Trembolone, yeah. Well, I think that the... Cause be, I'm not an expert. Trembolone sandwich. Oh, that is a good one. <laughs> that might be the funniest thing you've ever said. The Trembolone sandwich, man. That's a thing, though. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I thought you were really funny then, but you just copied something that no, someone else has said. I'm not, I'm not copying. It's, Trend baloney. It's, it's, it's very much out there. Uh, anyway, Trend baloney. So, Trend baloney, so, um, which has nothing to do with what I was about to talk about. But out of the 10 strongest men with all the other exercises, like the, the Dinny Stone carry and the wood frame carry that weighs fucking shitloads, Thor came in at number four there's three people on top of him that are stronger in the exercise who are they so you got tom stoltman who beat thor by 0.5 of a point and then you got this name matus it's a very european name i don't think i can pronounce it but 40.5 so that's what 2.5 points and 0.5 points so it's kind of tight between him and thor mitchell hooper in first place pulls in 52 points dude this guy man you got to see this dude this guy's he big str- he's strong bro big boy there's a fascination, isn't there, with the world's strongest man? I don't know about you, but when you grow up in Britain, every Christmas you watch the world's strongest man, and I, I'm, I don't know who the world's strongest man is right now, but I remember as a kid watching every year and I used to know these guys. We knew who the world's strongest men were all the time. Yeah. Because you're talking about the competition that's the um, the one where they do like the deadlifts with the cars and shit, right? And, yeah. And, like, and, and lifting up the stones and putting on the thing. Yeah, so this was... The, the Atlas Stones. So, sorry, I kind of fucked that up. It, it, I guess it is the Strongman competition, but this one is the Rogue Arnold Strongman Classic. So I guess it's quite a prestigious thing. So winning mm. this... So winning this puts you into that strong man category, I guess, where you can go to that big state. But this is already a massive stage now. Like, did you never watch one? the world's strongest man though? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you, do you not remember that beast from Poland, Marius Pudzianowski? The name rings a bell. He he won a few times. He was world's strongest man for a while, and then he went to go and fight in the UFC. Fuck, did he? Or Pride? Mm. I don't know. Some some kind of human cock fight then he was involved in. <laughs> okay, crazy. Did he win? I think he was in the UFC. I don't, I don't know if he won much. I don't think... I'm not an expert, but I don't think brute strength translates uniformly to success in combat sports mm. yeah obviously it's Some, a huge sometimes. factor sometimes. obviously it's a, obviously it's a factor but i don't think just because you're strong you're necessarily going to be able to fight really well correct yeah yeah you need to have some sort of skill to but be I, a really good fighter you have to be a straight killer I like, look at look at someone like John Jones. He yeah. is not winning any strongman competitions. No, but he's undefeated but he, in in light heavyweight and heavyweight now. Is he is he the greatest of all time? He is, without a doubt. Okay, so you say without a doubt. There are some other people that might. Be contenders, though, no? Name him. Okay. George St. Pierre. Yeah. I think... Fuck it. 
if I knew we were talking about this, I would have done my fucking research. Uh, it's okay. George, don't worry about that because you just say say whatever you want, and then no. people will tell us in the comments <laughs> what we got wrong. George Saint Pierre, I saw. I just want to say I'm a huge George Saint Pierre fan, but uh, he's also retired. John Jones is active, and I believe after he fought Cyril Garn at heavyweight, has now tied him as the most wi- winningest or title defense in two weight classes. George St. Pierre only did one weight class. Okay. Because he retired. What about- he retired twice. He retired and then came back to fight Michael Bisping and won the belt and then gave the belt away. So he didn't get a title defense at middleweight. So he gave it away. Okay, here's here's a question about combat sports. Does doing it in lots of different weight classes necessarily make someone a better fighter? Because, Because that's often thrown around that, oh, this guy did it in five separate weight classes. Is that relevant? I think so. Is I the ability to put on and put on or lose weight to make different weight classes actually relevant to your fighting skill and whether whether you're a better fighter? Because once again, George Saint Pierre, uh, in his reign, he also he also lost two fights in his career at welterweight. But then you get to a point that he didn't want to change his weight class. He didn't want to go up or down. Um, he had a long streak, don't get me wrong. Like he's, he's a Hall of Fame fighter. Had he gone into a different weight class, like John Jones has, he would be in a solid argument for GOAT. But he remained, he remained in that bracket for such an extended period of time. He's just the king of that weight class. Taking on another weight class. Yeah, but that's what I that's what I'm asking you. That's what that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Why does make why does doing it in a different weight class? Because you get you get. Is that just it then? The you, the you. It's the same as Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, fucking fantastic fighter. He had the longest streak. It was like nine years or ten years, where he didn't lose a fight. He, He had the greatest streak. And then just stayed at middleweight. He could have gone up to light heavy and fight John Jones, but how do you think that would have ended? What do you think that would have done to Anderson Silva's career? Fighting John Jones in his prime at light heavy. He would have lost heavily to John Jones. Heavily. Heavily. So like Here's the thing about the UFC, I think, is that that this is such a new sport that there's a really relevant recency bias. I think that if you took the best fighters 20 years ago, they're nowhere near as good as the best fighters now. No, I'd agree with that. The, the sport has been evolving so quickly Yeah, that they may have been the best in the world then, but but their actual comparison is a long way off where where the evolution of the sport has gone now. Yeah. 100% man. Yeah. So if you're the best now, you're the best ever. Well, and cons- so take John Jones into consideration as he's still active. He's been in this position from when he won his he, he won the belt in like 2010, 2011 or something. So or maybe even later 2012. He had that belt for fucking ages. He never gave it up. Well, he did give it up. He he, he lost it due to his uh, offences, let's say. But he hasn't lost a fight. His issues, let's say. Yeah, let's say the issues. The only only other person... You're right, John Jones is the best fighter of all time. But the only other person that can even fall into this argument as a fucking real close contender is BJ Penn. Because he did go into different weight classes. And he did hold belts. 
in two different classes. Right? BJ Penn was a fucking animal. Is is the UFC more entertaining to watch than boxing? Yeah. For sure. Think about it, right? Boxing is awesome. Why? Like, like boxing is really good, right? When you're... Here's something. Bruce Lee said, I'd rather... I fear the man... Sorry, wait, let me get this right. I don't fear the man that has practiced a thousand kicks once. I fear the man that has kicked once, has one kick a thousand times. So... You did your best not to fuck that up, but you still managed it. I still managed it. (laughs) I gotta write this shit down, man. We gotta stop free balling. <laughs> but imagine if you just had one thing to learn. The yeah. If you had one thing to learn that was yeah. just boxing, and you used your fucking hands, and you became super fucking good at it, man, that's impressive. It's impressive to watch movement, head well, movement, yeah, all that stuff. But here's the thing. Here you go. I'm not debating. I think obviously the. UFC fighters are way more well-rounded fighters. The the boxing guys have obviously hyper specialized. But what what my question is is the UFC any more entertaining than the hyper specialized boxing? I still I still think so, man. Like if you look at if you look at the crowds and the atmospheres and the places that they put on these fights, like what's been the most entertaining boxing fight recently? Sports fans. <laughs> uh, entertaining boxing fight. Well, in the last few years, I think we've seen a lot of good fights in the heavyweight division. But who's the who's the who's the number one pound for pound boxer right now? Is it Canelo Alvarez? I think so. What's amazing about Canelo Alvarez is that he got beat up by Floyd Mayweather, and normally that would be the end of a fighter. They'd never really recover from that. But what makes Canelo so special is that he took all of that beating, all of the skill that was shown in his own face, and learned from it and applied it to be the best boxer in the world. That's pretty rare, rare talent to do that. Yeah. Um, and he's incredibly entertaining to watch as well. That Mexican, The Mexican style of fighting just like advancing and the, and the counters and stuff. Like it's very, it's, it's very entertaining to watch from a, from a, like, I guess like an analytic approach to his boxing style. Um, yeah. The Mexicans just keep coming after you, don't they? They yeah, keep coming to you. It's very, it's very, it's very, they chase you down. Yeah. It's very entertaining to watch for sure. Rather than just like, like garden up or on the ropes. Right. Like, but like to answer your question, I still think I still think UFC is more. I wouldn't say far more entertaining. I'd just say it's more entertaining than boxing. Jake Paul, Jake Paul's bringing I, some sort of entertainment factor back in to it with his cockiness and stuff. But that's what Conor McGregor does, right? And that's how these other guys now are just emulating that entertainment side of just being lippy in the press conferences and just like trying to hype that up and trying to get a rise out of people. I think at the end of the day, like... There was a lot of talk yeah. that Jake Paul would be fighting Andrew Tate at some point. Yeah, I don't know about that. I can only imagine that that would probably break the internet. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Because... I think, I think, I think Tate would squash him, but... It, 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 if it was a boxing match, it'd be close. But if it's 
if it's MMA. Oh man, that takes. Yeah, I think it only makes sense as a boxing match. Yeah, I do. St- I do think that Andrew Tate would beat him, but Andrew Tate is old, yeah. and Jake Paul is is a is in in his physical prime. Andrew Tate. So I think it would be mental patient. And Jake Paul isn't. Jake Paul's on that entertainment side. Like some of the shit Andrew Tate says is like, fucked. He's a wild. What's the most? What's the most outrageous thing you think he said? Dude, I couldn't even piece together a solid Bruce Lee quote. I can't even. I can only hear his voice in my head saying just random shit. He's got a funny voice, isn't he? Yeah. Man, it's hard to to pick out an accent on the guy. Yeah, if you had your eyes closed, if you had your eyes closed, and you could hear someone talking and it sounded like that, you'd be like, "Oh, Andrew Tate." <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but when you first hear the voice, you think, "Is that American? Is it British? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there." Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit wild for sure. Uh, Jake Paul, but I think I think he. But, but did you hear about Jake Paul putting out the million dollar? Sparring contract to Sean Strickland? No. Yeah, he's put out a million dollar sparring contract and then he's going to fly out to Puerto Rico and have a spa with him. And then he's like, ah, oh. he's like, I don't know if the UFC or Dana will allow it. He's like, and Jake Paul's like, it's just a spa, but it's for a million dollars. So if it does happen, you know it's going to be full contact. <laughs> so. Jake Paul is paying Sean Strickland a million dollars. He's putting a million dollars, like on to have a sparring. Oh right, match. Yeah. Surely there's only one winner in that. Man, I thought so, I thought Sean was going to beat Drickus. So I don't fucking know anymore, man. Hey, there are people out there who say he did beat Drickus. Most of the fight community still think that. Why was it such a controversial decision? Just, uh, there's all that old this rule that isn't written, but it is to beat the champion. You have to beat the champion, right? And. If you were to look at this from like a schoolyard perspective, if you're in a fight in a schoolyard and there's all these kids around you and they're like, fight, 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 just chanting and shit. And you had to fight one-on-one with one person and you got, you go at it, bang, 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 bang. He doesn't land a punch on you, but you dust his face up. You might not knock him down. You might, it might not get weird, but you dust his face up, scratched, bruised, battered. All the kids in that circle looking at you would be like, you beat him. You didn't go to the ground. No one got knocked out. No one got tapped out. But you're both standing and one person's face is fucked compared to the other person. Then you you didn't beat that person. The person with the busted face, you lost. And all the kids know it. Blood was drawn. You Mm -hmm. look at Dricker's face. You look at Dricker's face compared to Sean's face. Bang. How do you not, how do you not as a judge be like more significant hits were landed on Drickus than what Drickus landed on Sean, right? That's probably the trouble though with a, a scoring system that's based on each individual round. Yeah. They've been like... Is that you, yeah. you, 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 you break it down so much that you lose track of judging the whole fight as yeah. one entity. Yeah, for sure. Like, there's there's other little rules in there, like octagon control, takedowns, knockdowns, significant strikes, all that stuff. But I think at the end of the day, as like a Coliseum gladiator kind of approach, you have to beat the champion. Are they having a rematch? Uh, I'm not sure, because Sean only held the belt for that defense. So it might be Robert Whitaker that gets a shot at Drickus. Because he just won against Paulo Costa, 
So it might go Whitaker, and if Drica still holds on to it, there could be the rematch. But then there's Izzy. Israel Adesanya is still in the fray, right? So that that division is fucking stacked. Why does everyone hate Israel Israel Adesanya? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not really that much of a follower. So I I, I haven't been able to see why he's so disliked. <sighs> I like Izzy. I like Izzy up until that Sean Strickland Israel fight. And I thought Sean, like Sean's a fucking screw loose, right? And I thought he was talking to, um, fuck. He was talking to like Burt Kreischer or something. And, 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 and Izzy seems so cool and collective but then Sean tried to get into his head and say all sorts of weird things. And then Izzy kind of like kissed his dog on the mouth or something. <laughs> and it was kind of like... That's weird. And it was put on Twitter. And it's like... And, Sean, and then Sean just grabbed a hold of it, right? And he just put it out on all his Instagram and all this stuff and... I guess people kind of like, dude, that's kind of like fucking weird. But Izzy as a fighter, man, like he's super entertaining. I'd still watch his fights, but I don't know. That picture's out there on the internet, man. I don't know, dude. (laughs) It's kind of weird. You know, what's kind of cool is that we haven't talked about professional fighting on the show before. Yeah. But we have now, so hopefully we will attract a whole new subset of fans to come and watch the podcast. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll t- <laughs> they'll, they'll happily tell you about Izzy. Is it, yeah, is so, a story. I mean, there's a story of Izzy and Bert Kreischer <laughs> in New Zealand, and like Bert was getting fucking wasted, and he, he was talking to Izzy and shit. <laughs> And he took off his shirt and Izzy was like, Bert Kreischer, no one fucks with this man. Like, no one fucking even comes at him. He's my boy. And then Bert and Izzy stood back to back with their shirts off in a nightclub, just being like, fuck you, come and fight me. Fuck you. He's my boy and all this stuff, right? But Izzy's like, obviously a professional fighter, but Bert's like a chunky comedian. (laughs) So he's like pointing at guys being like, I'll fuck you up. And they're like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure if Izzy wasn't there. <laughs> That's, yeah. But I would be kind of curious to know if there are any fight fans who really know why no one likes Israel Adesanya, please let us know in the comments. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's the big one, dude. <laughs> but everyone hated Tom Brady, right? Everyone okay. hates Tom Brady because he was the fucking GOAT. Like Izzy was on some nice trajectory up there, right? Every, heavy is the head that lies the crown, right? Until it gets fucking knocked, knocked off your head. That was the wisest thing you've ever said. I'm on a roll today. You got me fired yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. You know who gets me fired up is Bert Kreischer. Fucking oath. When have you seen the video of him? talking about how he'll never give up drinking man it's so good if you ever need to get pumped up for a night out or just a tuesday night glass of beer watch bert kreischer talk about how much he loves drinking it's truly inspiring it's so good (laughs) it'll change your life (laughs) <laughs> You'll never be the same after listening to this guy. Even if you change like alcohol, like if you just, if you're like remove alcohol and replace it with learning or remove or running, replace it with running. Yeah. Or lifting or nutrition or anything else other than alcohol, you'd be super inspired to do it. But because it's alcohol and the way he fucking hypes it up, you're like, oh, fuck, I want a fucking, I want a mimosa. I want a bottomless mimosa. Mm. <laughs> He's, 
I because uh, with Bert Kreischer, I've watched his comedy and I don't tend to find it that funny. Oh, I get a but he just dries out of it. <laughs> but in the in 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 just everyday moments, he seems like one of the funniest people alive. Oh yeah, man. Him and Tom Segura just started like a a podcast maybe a few months ago or something. Two Bears, One Cave. And now they're like collaborating and made their own like vodka, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty... The, promo- the promotional videos for that is fucking outrageous. It's just Bert Kreischer. It's Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura probably. talking absolute shit and it's fucking funny. You know, Bert Kreischer drinks a half gallon of Kool Aid every day. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> I saw it's... that, and I genuinely have probably never laughed harder in my entire life. Damn. My reaction was exactly the same as Tom Segura's. Yeah, it's like just complete fuckery. <laughs> like what? <laughs> It's mad that people like Tom Segura exist. Yeah. Yeah. I, fuck, what was the documentary I watched? And there, and there was like certain areas in the United States have just like Mountain Dew, Code Red, all that fucking soda and shit. And they just constantly drink it. It's like fillings and dental and health is fucking out the window. Like, it's crazy. Like two liters of Mountain Dew or more per day. It's part of a bigger problem, isn't it? Yeah. I heard a statistic this week that a billion people on Earth are obese. What's the population of Earth? I think it's about seven or eight billion. Fuck. So you can easily say. One in seven people. But technically, and when you think, yeah, and so I had this debate with someone as well about BMI because BMI is the metric used to define whether someone is a healthy weight or obese or whatever, and it's a very blunt tool. It's not very precise, but, no. but. It's probably the best available tool because what's what's the alternative that you can actually use and is applicable? Well, body fat percentage. Yeah, but how would you measure your body fat percentage? On, on, on my scale? How accurate is that? And not everyone has access to that kind of thing, right? But sure. the, the the BMI is a very flawed scale because not only does it classify some athletes as being obese, it also probably classes a lot of skinny fat guys as being healthy weight. Yeah. Yeah. Like how many people in India are classed as normal weight? when they're all just skinny fat. Yeah. Here's something. Here's something. Instead of BMI, you just do your fucking, your pant size. Yeah, but that changes as well based on how tall you are, no? Well, okay, here's an example. If you gain more weight, but your waist remains the same, and you are in your pants, Provided that your stomach isn't bloated or ex- filled out and you've put on more weight and your waist remains the same, isn't that better than your uh, Here's a question. At what waist size? <laughs> what waist size does someone have to say before you think you're a fat cunt? 36? 
Yeah, it's 36. probably 36 or 38, maybe. 38, yeah. If you, yeah, if you're at a, a 38, if you're at a 38 and you're not six foot six, you might have a problem. No, let's, 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 let's say if you've got a 38 inch waist, you're a fat. <laughs> you fucking animal. No, let's, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> Let's You're be honest. Look, if you work. if you've got a thirty-inch waist, you're skinny. If you've got a thirty-two or a thirty-four, you're in a normal range. If you've got a thirty-six, you've got you've got an issue to fix. But if you're thirty-eight or forty-inch waist, you are fat. Yeah, that's a. That's a fucking solid size. I think that's that's a better metric than BMI. Yeah. But ima- but imagine if you had a thirty eight waist and it remained that same, but you dropped weight. You have yeah. That just means old, you're you losing have, muscle, doesn't it? You have a big old dump truck. <laughs> thirty eight inch every waist. Hour. Listen. Some people are out there with a 40-inch waist. Yeah. Fuck. And then and then they're eating pizza on top of that. Yeah. Imagine the cognitive dissonance required to wake up in the morning and put on your 40-inch waist pair of jeans and then go out and eat pizza. You're in a hot place, man. Like, if that's the case, you're in a fucking... You're in a dark Surely, place. surely, the moment you walk into the shop and buy a pair of 40-inch waist jeans, that's got to be a wake-up call. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because 36 to 38, you can... It's just a little slide, right? Once you reach 40, you're in a whole other category. Yeah. Yeah. Forty inch waist. Yeah, that's big. What's the what's the XXXL equivalent of a forty inch waist? Is it triple X? Yeah. That's a, I think that's a good me- metric as well, right? I think. If you're an extra large, you can be an extra large by just being a big person. Be- an extra large shirt is like a 36 inch waist. But a 2XL, that's the same as a 38 inch waist. You are fat. <laughs> a triple XL is a 40 inch waist. Yeah. Dude, yeah. How. How did we get on to such matters of fatness? BMI, you started with fucking bullshit metrics. Okay, so let's agree then to change BMI as a standard metric and replace it with waist size. That's it. So what do we do with everyone over a 38 then? Round them up? Everyone on a 38? Fucking... Stick them on a treadmill. You know it's illegal to be overweight in Japan. Fuck off, is it? Yeah. And I don't know if... Well, and, and think about it. When's the last time you saw a really overweight Japanese, apart from the sumo wrestlers? Um, I was in Japan, and... I never noticed anyone like, oh, like, like, oh my god, that's fucking, that's a big dude. Like, mm. never did I ever do that once. No, they're all in, they're all in good shape. It's not like when you go to Florida and everyone is four hundred pounds on on those mobile like sit down scooters. The the fattest people I've ever seen were all in Florida. Which seems, it's counterintuitive to me, because if you were really fat like that, 
Why would you want to live in a warm place? Yeah. Yeah. There's probably nothing more uncomfortable than being really fat in a warm place. Yeah, no, nah, dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> Call me up. Go and live put in Canada in, if you're really yeah, fat. Yeah, in the freezer. <laughs> This has gotten to be quite ridiculous now, hasn't it? But I think it's fat in Florida, aren't they? Really fat. But it's all going that way now. Everyone's getting fatter and fatter. Yeah. I wonder when we'll reach a point where the percentage of people who are obese is more than 50%. I fucking hope not, man. Cause like we said Dude, before, I think it's going to happen in the next 10 or 15 years. Man. All you can do is just be on the other side of that fucking metric. That's all you can do. 40% of Americans are obese now. Man. That's crazy. Including, including you. Kind of sucks. What's worse, though, being obese or being victim weight? <laughs> That's a tricky one, isn't it? Do you know what's really tragic? Is that some people out there are obese and victim weight. What? Because they're like five foot and like yeah. If you under if nine. you were like. <laughs> If you were like five feet tall and 195 pounds, yeah. you probably classed as obese, but you are still victim weight. Well, oh, yeah. Imagine if there was a percentage of that in the world. That must be the worst roll of the dice you could get. Is that Danny DeVito? Probably. How tall? He was about five feet tall, wasn't he? Yeah. But let's see how low. Let's have a look at a BMI scale here. I fucking hate BMI because it's like it's on my scale, right? So the first thing that comes up is my weight recorded, and then it's BMI, body fat percentage, muscular density, skeletal density, and then um, fluid water percentage. Yeah. Yeah. But the first thing that comes up is BMI. It's a good scale just to keep in check, I think. I think if you look at it and you're like, holy shit, like last week I was 28 on the BMI scale, but this week I'm 30, you can make some adjustments to get back there. But I wouldn't, I I wouldn't base it as like a be all end all scale to it. No, neither would I. Yeah. Okay. If you're five feet tall. If you're five feet tall, you only have to weigh 70 kilograms to be classed as obese. Crazy. So, there are plenty of people out there right now walking on the streets among us, still with their freedom, who are obese and victim weight at the same time. I think that that's the only way to close this show. Yeah, it's a. It's, it's been a lot of fun, sports fans. It was a strange one, dude, but kind of into it. <laughs> we went here, there, and everywhere. Sweet. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Take it easy. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>